Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at the distributive property and partial products. Let's get into it. What you're going to expect to see is that we are going to do some distributing or using the distributive property, and we're going to have practice. First off, the distributive property looks like this. It means three times everything inside the parentheses. What I like to tell my students, everything outside the parentheses gets multiplied times everything inside the parentheses. That's the distributive property. So the way that I like to show this is using these arcs. So three times one and three times two. We do put an addition sign between them. The way that this will start to look later on um, is that you'll see it written like this. Notice the only difference is we got rid of that um, multiplication sign, and that's pretty standard. If something's right up against a, a grouping symbol, it means that it's multiplied times what's inside there. So in other words, three times everything inside there, or three times one and three times two. So you would write that like this, three times one plus three times two. I want you to try this out. Um, using this expression. I have written it with the multiplication sign for you, but I want you to try expanding it using distribution. You don't have to solve it, just expand it out. What would it look like if we multiply four times each term inside of the parentheses? Go for it. Hey, welcome back. Did you first do four times six and then add on four times seven? That's exactly what the distributive property is. And you may have seen the distributive property used before. But what we're going to do is take this idea of the distributive property and kind of flip it upside down and use it backwards a little bit. And this is when the distributive property actually becomes really helpful especially for your future math. I'm, I'm now looking in a crystal ball and I can see your future. I guarantee you're going to see this type of thing in your future math classes. Here's how it works. Instead of taking the distributive property and making it expanding it, we are going to simplify using the distributive property. So if you're given an expression like this, five times two plus five times six, you would take out the common factor of five and put the other two numbers together. Now the reason that I know this works is because you can then go backwards and do five times two and five times six. See, if we work our way backwards like that, you can see we haven't really changed anything. We've just simplified it, all right? And that's how you can use the distributive property for simplifying, which is definitely something you're gonna see in Algebra 1 later on. For now, we are going to do something where we simplify some decimals, and it's actually expanding decimals, we're going to expand some decimals out to try to make mental math a little bit quicker. And by doing that, of course, we make the steps have more steps, but each step seems to be a little bit easier. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take this 7 times 6.8, and I'm going to expand using the distributive property. So I'm going to take 7 on the outside of the parentheses, and I'm going to expand out that 6.8 to being 6 plus 0.8, or 6 plus 8 tenths. Then I will multiply 7 times 6, and then I'm going to multiply 7 times 8 tenths, and that is expanding out this, this expression. And you might say, why are you doing that? But basically, let me kind of illustrate here. Essentially, what we're doing is we're taking each part here, we're multiplying 7 times each part. This step here just helps us look at each part separately. But basically, we're taking that 7 and multiplying it times each part. 
And to do that, it makes each multiplication question a little bit easier. It's also called something. This is called partial products. It's when we take a number like that and we sort of spread it on out to make hopefully some, some mental math a little bit easier. And let, let's practice a little bit with it. I'm going to show you this example here. I'm first going to expand using the distributive property. So instead of 4 times 7.83, I'm going to do 4 times 7 plus 0.8 plus 0 0.03. Notice again, I have taken the 4 and multiplied it times each term separately, right? Because I expanded out this number. So I'm going to do 4 times 7, 4 times 0 0.8, and 4 times 0 0.03. Again, this is my partial products. I'm trying to make this into three little simple multiplication questions instead of one really big kind of complicated um, multiplication question. And it works, which is really great. All right, now we're going to actually take it to the next level and solve. So here we go. Solve using partial products and the distributive property. Oh, our first actually solved question that we're going to do. We're going to take 3 and we're going to multiply it times 20, 4, and 5 hundredths. So we first expand that 24 and 5 hundredths into being this, 20 plus 4 plus 5 hundredths. Then we're going to multiply 3 times 20. We're going to multiply 3 times 4. And we're going to multiply 3 times five hundredths. And we do that because you know your three times tables. You know three times two is six, so three times twenty is sixty. You know three times four is twelve. You know three times five is fifteen. So those ones you could do using mental math. But I don't think you could do three times twenty-four and five hundredths using mental math. Right? We're breaking this down into smaller bite-sized pieces and then we add them all together at the end. For our last question, we are going to look at 2 times 14 and 21 hundredths. I want you to try this one out on your own. Try using those partial products and distributive property. So expand out that second number and do the multiplication. Pause the video, come back, and show me what you did. I know you can't actually show me what you did, but I'm going to show you what I did, and hopefully it looks like what you did. How about that? Sounds like a deal, and because I'm here by myself, it's a deal. All right, let's take a look at this. We expand the number 14 and 21 hundredths to look like this. I want to um, show you that the number 1 becomes 10, 4 is 4, 2 tenths is just written as 2 tenths, and 1 hundredth, notice how we need to have that 0 in there so that each number is going in the correct place value. So that's what we have. Now we're going to multiply 2 times 10. Oh, man, that's not bad. 2 times 4. Again, not a, not a hard question by itself. 2 times 2 tenths and 2 times 1 hundredth. Each part is actually a, not that bad. Also notice in this question, I did not put the parentheses in. You don't need to put them in. My personal preference is to have them in. I prefer the way I did it in the last question. But you don't have to put them in. I just think that when you're doing a question like this, having those parentheses in helps to show each part very clearly um, so that you know exactly what you're doing. But again, as far as math goes, you have to multiply before you would add so it doesn't change the number or the value or make it um, anything different, it's just visually to me kind of puts the different parts um, separated. Now let's go ahead and solve them. 2 times 10 is 20, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.4, and 2 times uh, 0 0.01 is 0 0.02. Then when you add them together, we get 28 and 42 hundredths. There it is. A little bit easier maybe um, in each step. It is complicated to set it up, but then hopefully we're saving a little bit of time um, with the mental math 
in that last step. Couple things to remember, the distributive property. You will be using this in your future. I know you will. You're gonna see it in, in sixth grade math, you'll see it in seventh grade math, you'll see it up into algebra one, algebra two, you're going to be using the distributive property. Partial products is something that helps you understand. It's also a mental math quick trick. So practice that and it'll help get your mental math going a little bit quicker so you can do some larger math in your head. And although it seems silly now to do all of these steps, you will see them again. They may seem silly then too, but trust me on it, you'll see it again. So take some time and practice using the worksheet and then show us that you've got it by taking that quiz. Good luck. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.